Hi folks, should be a quick video today because I just want to report on some ballistic gel testing that I did with the 135 grain Burger Classic Hunter. We've worked up loads with this bullet in 6.5 Creedmoor and in the 6.5 Grindle. It has been an exceptionally accurate bullet and my hope was that this could be a viable option for deer hunting in both of these cartridges. So I want to start out with uh, 6.5 Grindle. We got our, our best velocity with Power Pro Varmint. So the load I tested today was 28.8 grains of Power Pro Varmint, CCI 450 primers, and Hornady brass at a 2.260 inch overall length. The velocity for this load was about 2,350 feet per second. And today it was awfully cold. I was actually seeing closer down to uh, 2,325 feet per second. So this is not exactly a screaming hot Grendel load. We could probably push the bullet a little bit faster than this, but not a whole lot. So what I wanted to do was put the ballistics gel down range at 200 yards. I had a look over on the Hornady website, their ballistic calculator, and it says we should see velocities of about 2,050 feet per second at the target. Berger doesn't seem to advertise minimum expansion velocities, but what I've seen when people, you know, email them and ask them or whatever is like 1800 feet per second. So I was hoping that here at 200 yards, 2050 feet per second, we'd still be going fast enough to get this bullet to expand for us. I don't have the greatest footage of the gel, but I'll show you what I got. I shot a total of five shots into the gel. So let's just look at all of those and then we'll come back and look at the bullets. All right, so this result was pretty disappointing. I did have like the first shot went down into the table and then some of the later shots, I actually had two different shots that I'm pretty sure they're the ones that shed these pieces of copper and then the rest of the bullet veered off and exited the gel. So what we've got here, well, okay. So we had one, one shot that simply tumbled and this guy was fully recovered from inside the gel. You can see the hollow point is still intact. All it did was split a little bit. The core is still fully in there. And all this did was tumble. I had two that shed this same looking piece. This is the, uh, basically the ogive of the bullet and the hollow point. So it seems like this hollow point just did not want to split. And we're left with these uh, seashell looking things. Here's another one that uh, actually did expand a little bit. Base still in place, most of the core still in there but at least it did try to expand. And then I recovered a couple cores that were pretty much fully in, uh, intact, just a little curve to them where the bullet clearly yawed and bent a little bit. So overall, pretty disappointing results here at these velocity levels out of the 6.5 Grendel. Not what I wanted to see. Now on the 6.5 Creedmoor side of things, we used Reloader 26. Our charge weight was 49.3 grains, CCI 450 primers, Starline small uh, primer brass and a 2.800 inch overall length. Now velocity on this load is smoking fast, 2,900 feet per second. So this is an exceptionally high velocity 6.5 Creedmoor load. Running it through the uh, ballistics calculator, so 2,900 feet per second at the muzzle, down at 200 yards where our target was, it says we should have been right about 2,587 feet per second. So these bullets were hauling butt out of the Creedmoor and still hauling butt when it made it down to the gel. I shot a total of three shots with the Creedmoor. The first and second, the, the, the gel was properly in place, but the third one was just kind of an extra shot. I didn't walk all the way down to reset the uh, gel, so they were like sitting apart when I shot, whatever. You get the point, but let's go have a look at those guys. All right, here is the bullet from our first shot. Have you ever seen anything look so pretty? It held together really well. It expanded like crazy and should have retained almost all of its weight. I'll tell you what, I haven't measured it. Let me, let me measure it real quick. I guess it lost a fair amount. It's 98 grains, but our main piece here, 98 grains, that is still pretty darn, pretty darn good. And that's just, that's a good looking bullet. Now it kind of went downhill from here. Here are the other big chunks I got. And the worst one here, 
or the one that worries me the most is this guy because if you look that hollow point did not split so it did break apart but it didn't really mushroom here's a base piece from one of them and then the, here's the other largest piece now beyond this here's what i got this is what I picked out of the gel once I got back inside and started working on it with some uh, with some tweezers. Uh, that's a piece of gel. Lots of little pieces. A tiny little bit of this possibly could have been from the Grendel shots, but I really don't think so because I was careful to try and get the chunks out after I uh, finished the Grendel stuff and moved on to Creedmoor. So I'm pretty pretty sure all of these or you know almost all of this is from the Creedmoor. And like I said, I mean even this guy that mushroomed so nicely did lose 30 grains. So a fair amount of breakup here going on with these bullets. So I'm particularly disappointed in the uh, results with the Grendel. This one bullet that just held together, I don't want to see that, man. So I'm taking this guy off the table for me in the 6.5 Grendel. The next thing I think I'm going to try in that cartridge is the 130 grain Sierra Game King, but I'm not holding my breath here either. It might just be best to stay down in the 123 grain class for the Grendel, but it's worth trying out these heavy ones. I like shooting heavy bullets. So that's where we'll be going next with that. Now in the 6.5 Creedmoor, I'm not sure what the, that first shot was amazing, right? That one there, man, that's just what I wanted to see. But I am a little concerned with the inconsistency. I will say though, I mean, all, the ones that didn't mushroom, they still came apart like crazy. They would have smoked any deer I'm gonna shoot, no doubt about it. But I wouldn't wanna go shooting one of these through, uh, through an elk shoulder if they're gonna come apart this easy. But that's not a huge surprise, right? I mean, that's why all of these bonded bullets and stuff exist that are supposed to hold together better because the classic hunting bullet didn't do that, right? It, it, did, it did come apart. So I guess it's not a huge surprise, but I would definitely feel good about hitting the deer woods with these. I just would have liked to have seen a little more consistent, a uh, little more consistent expansion, I guess. I'm no terminal ballistics expert. This is actually the first time I've used this gel and I got to thank Ozark Spirit for sending that, uh, sending that to me, donating that to the channel. I really appreciate it. So maybe as I test more bullets as we go along, I'll learn more and maybe I'll come to look at these results in a different light as I learn. I don't know. So I think that's where we'll leave this one. If you'd like to help support my channel, you can come to patreon.com reloading and I will see you guys next time.